بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طلبتنا الأعزاء uh, Today we will continue with the, uh, this, with this part of the gastrointestinal tract the diseases of small and large intestine Uh, regarding the mucosal lining, the small intestine is lined by tall columnar absorptive cells, mucus secreting cells, and panis cells with apical granules, and that and the mucosa is made up of long, tall, uh, parallel uh, villi. Whereas the large intestine is lined by mucus, goblet cells, absorptive cells, and entero endocrine cells with basal nuclei uh, and the lining mucosa of the colon is like the stomach is made up made up of crypts or glands or pits not villi uh, another structure important structure in the lining mucosa and submucosa is the Malt that is mucosal associated lymphoid tissue very important for IgA secretion to uh, interact with the uh, exposed uh, pathogens and other immunoglobulin so far. Uh, to start with, uh, we will discuss the congenital anomalies of the small and large intestine. Congenital anomalies first is as is atresia and stenosis atresia and stenosis as we discussed it previously in the esophagus atresia means obliteration of a bowel loop or bowel segment uh, and stenosis is narrowing in, of that segment it is more common uh, if it is complete is called atresia it is incomplete narrowing is called stenosis most commonly seen in the duodenum uh, duodenum and ileum have equal incidence and rare it is rare in the rectum uh, another developmental failures uh, intrauterine vascular accident or intersusceptions uh, we will discuss intersusception later and imperforated anus. Imperforated anus is another congenital anomaly. Here there is a blind loop uh, of atratic uh, bowel segment. Number two, Meckel's diverticulum. Meckel's diverticulum is a congenital abnormality or developmental abnormality it is the re re related to persistence of vitiline duct uh, present on anti mesenteric side present on anti mesenteric side uh, and is called uh, and is a true true diverticulum that is involved all the layers of the bowel of the small bowel uh, that is through diverticulum. It is called a disease of twos. Two, two percent is affect two percent of population. Two to one male to female incidence. Two inches in length. Two feet from the ileocecal valve. And two types of ectopic tissue. Are, uh, are present within the diverticulum, like gastric and pancreatic inlets, and uh, that are the reason for, for a peptic ulcer disease present in Nichols diverticulum or ectopic pancreatic exocrine gland secretion uh, in pancreatic islet heterotopia. And Michael's diverticulum. Again, two major complication or common complications is pain with inflammation, that is Michael's diverticulitis, uh, hemorrhage and ulcer, that is peptic ulcer due to ectopic gastric inlet within the diverticulum, within the mucosa of this diverticulum. Another congenital anomaly, number three, is congenital aganglionic megacolon. Congenital aganglionic megacolon, or called Hirschsprung's disease. 
it is the uh, colonic uh, counterpart or colonic uh, simulator of achalasia of the esophagus that, uh, and both of them are related to absence of ganglionic cells uh, here uh, due to failure of migration of neural crest cells from the cecum to the rectum so the rectum is devoid of ganglion cells both submucosal Meissner's and myenteric or Bach plexuses in the segment are lost with loss of coordinated parastalsis and this is called a functional type of obstruction functional ob obstruction both sub submucosal and intramuscular uh, plexuses neural plexuses are uh, uh, not present male to female incidence is four to one higher male incidence and can be sporadic or familial and uh, it is uh, occurs in one in five thousand live birth uh, can be also associated with another congenital anomalies including heart congenital anomalies uh, this is the normal location of the uh, submucosal submucosal uh, myenteric plexus and the Auerbach intramuscular uh, ganglion cells and uh, uh, in neural bundles between the longitudinal and circular muscle intramuscular. Uh, nerve cells or ganglia so both of them are lost both the submucosal and intramuscular neural uh, plexuses are uh, lost in case of Hirschsprung's disease result in in coordinated peristalsis or loss of and loss of peristalsis with associated uh, uh, continuous structure and upward dilatation clinically the patient or the neonate presented with uh, present in the neonatal period with failure to pass meconium and abdominal distension with constipation uh, risk uh, with a risk of perforation unless it is corrected surgically sepsis enterocolitis due to fluid disturbances and the rectum is affected with involvement of the proximal uh, segment sometimes. Uh, a ganglionic segment uh, will result in functional obstruction rather than mechanical. So it is a functional related to uncoordinated neuromuscular uh, movement with distension or dilatation of the proximal segment of the uh, rectum and colon. Uh, types of mechanical colonic mechanical obstruction. So again, uh, again, uh, Hirschsprung's disease is a type of of uh, functional obstruction related to loss or absence of ganglion cells within the. Um, submucosal and muscular uh, layers with the resultant loss of coordinated peristalsis and functional obstruction uh, should be corrected surgically uh, types and other types of obstruction obstruction in the bowel uh, Number one, herniation. Herniation is the protrusion of bowel loop through uh, abdominal or inguinal uh, abdominal at the level of umbilical uh, abdominal wall uh, or through a uh, hernial uh, through inguinal hernial sac. So umbilical hernia and inguinal hernia protrusion of the bowel loop through this herniated. Or herniation through this uh, this abdominal her hernial sac, the complication is strangulation, obstruction, or and twisting of the blood vessels, 
with gangrenous necrosis. Another type of mechanical obstruction is adhesion. Adhesion, adhesion or ligation of the uh, two bowel lobes by thickened band related to focus of infection or peritonitis with uh, complicating uh, fibrosis. This will result in kinking of the bowel loops and obstruction of the lumen. Uh, intersusception. intersusception is uh, uh, another uh, type of mechanical obstruction in which there is Telescopic movement or folding of proximal segment into the distal one uh, result in bowel obstruction. This is common in infant and neonate. And volvulus. Volvulus is rotation of bowel loop around its pedicle or around its neck. Uh, its mesenteric border, and this will also result in strangulation and obstruction and gangrenous necrosis, most commonly in the sigmoid colon. Uh, again, diverticular disease. Diverticular disease is uh, is also can result in intestinal obstruction. Diverticular disease. Diverticulosis means uh, in general, diverticulum is a protrusion of mucosa or and submucosa or protrusion of the whole wall that is through diverticulum, as in Michael's diverticulum, whereas uh, colonic diverticulosis, most common site is the sigmoid colon. Uh, he, most is most commonly mucosal and submucosal. Diverticulosis means presence of multiple diverticula within the wall of the colon, colon and diverticulitis is the result of uh, inflammation, is the process of chronic inflammation within that diverticular uh, lumen as a result of obstruction or eliciting uh, inflammatory reaction. It is an acquired herniation, uh, most commonly associated to in, or seen in patients with low fiber diet high red meat diet and uh, this is related due to increase in intraluminal colonic uh, pressure. Uh, most common site is the left colon, especially in the sigmoid colon, it can be associated with chronic or acute inflammation, it can be some asymptomatic. Perforation of the diverticulum with associated peritonitis and uh, as a result of ruptured diverticulitis with associated fistula with other bowel loop and is a disease of adult age group. Diverticula is the plural of uh, diverticulum. It is usually seen on both sides of the longitudinal, this is the longitudinal muscle band, and diverticula are seen on both uh, sides on both borders of the uh, longitudinal muscle band. Here, multiple diverticula. Uh, X ray or barium enema showed the uh, multiple diverticula, multiple intraluminal. Uh, or, uh, Projections made of mucosa and submucosa, multiple. Diverticulosis again indicates multiple mucosal and submucosal protrusion uh, through an area of weakness in the muscle wall. Uh, whereas diverticulitis is the inflammation in the wall with hyperemia and uh, congestion due to obstruction of the lumen of these diverticula uh, with uh, risk of perforation and peritonitis. Hernia or hernias. A hernia is a serosa lined outpouching of peritoneum. So the hernial sac is lined by serosa 
uh, contain loop of intestine and will be interrupted within the hernial sac and result in compression of the bowel with twisting at the mouth of hernia with uh, blood supply obstruction with resultant strangulation and gangrenous necrosis and infarction. Uh, Adhesions, band-like scar tissue that is formed during healing after surgery or after peritonitis. Thick band of fibrous tissue with kinking of bowel loops. Result in kinking and compression and obstruction of the lumen. Uh, Adhesion band, adhesion band connecting between the abdominal wall and the intestine or, or the bowel loop after a surgery or after peritonitis result in this thick fibrous adhe adhesion band with complicating uh, uh, compression on the wall and obstruction. Intersusception. Intersusception is caused by enfolding or folds of the mucosa into the dist uh, of, uh, seg uh, proximal segment into the distal segment or called telescopic movement of one segment of bowel into the adjacent distal segment. It is common in infant and children. Uh, sometimes presented as acute abdomen or abdominal mass, uh, can be relieved spontaneously and can be reversible or it is irreversible, should be corrected surgically to, uh, to release the obstruction, the sinal obstruction. Uh, in adult, the susception is usually caused by tumor in which the polyp will uh, pull or, or the tumor pull the mucosa or pull the wall of the uh, bowel into the distal segment. Ileocecal region is the com most common site affected ileocecal region. Volvulus is obstruction due to rotation or twisting of a loop of a bowel around its mesentric base around its mesentric base and the left colon the sigmoid specifically is most common site affected volvulus is a type of mechanical mechanical obstruction with a uh, complicating uh, obs uh, vascular obstruction and uh, uh, strangulation and infarction Uh, ischemic vascular diseases of the bowel, disorders affecting blood vessels or blood supply. Ischemic it is either ischemic, or, sorry, uh, it is two type ischemic bowel disease and hemorrhoids. The ischemic bowel disease uh, can be acute obstruction of one artery may, and may lead to, to infarction. This is common in old individual and the uh, commonest causative agent is atherosclerotic mesentric artery atherosclerosis with the resultant acute abdominal pain and tenderness and bloody diarrhea and rigid abdomen or guarding of the abdomen with paralytic ileus loss of bowel sounds or it, it is insidious uh, pro progression uh, when there is uh, anastomosis ha has no uh, in, in which the anastomosis has no effect uh, and present as uh, presented with chronic ischemic colitis episodes of bloody diarrhea again the most common cause is uh, superior mesenteric artery atherosclerosis in elderly man. Transneural infarction with resultant mechanical obstruction of the major artery. The causes, causes of ischemia either occlusive or non-occlusive. Occlusive is in which there is a some, something obstruct the lumen. Non-occlusive, there is no uh, 
thrombus or no embolus or no uh, uh, plaque or vegetations within uh, causing the obstruction. So occlusion uh, arterial thrombosis and severe atherosclerosis of the origin of arteries or arteritis, inflammation or vasculitis, inflammation of the arteries, autoimmune inflammation of the arteries, surgical accident and dissecting aneurysm. Also, hypercoagulable state, so thrombus are seen within the arteries causing obstruction and also oral contraceptive pulse will inc encourage hypercoagulative state. Uh, arterial embolism, embolus, arterial embolus from cardiac vegetations or aortic atheroma. So thrombosis is thrombus formation at the site or at the uh, uh, atherosclerotic plaque and embolism is propagation or propagation of a thrombus or embolus from uh, ha heart vegetations and aortic atheroma and also venous thrombosis, arterial and venous thrombosis. Whereas the non-occlusive type of ischemia of the bowel is a result from heart failure any cause of hypotension, severe hypotension, the blood will be, blood supply will be impaired, will be severely uh, lowered to the bowel loops, uh, and shock, septic shock, hemorrhagic shock, dehydration, and this will result in decreased mesenteric artery circulation in which the blood will be delivered in this severe state of hypotension the blood will be delivered to the vital organs and result in mesenteric circulation uh, uh, insufficiency and decreased mesenteric circulation and ischemia necrosis ischemic necrosis ischemic infarction according to the uh, to the, to the severity it can be uh, mucosal only mucosal uh, necrosis only at, at, in the uh, earlier stages uh, mucosal and submucosal or even transmural transmural involving the whole thickness of the bowel wall this will uh, require uh, uh, surgical dissection of the necrotic segment and gangrenous segment. So here, uh, blue colored or dark colored hemorrhagic necrosis affecting the uh, bowel uh, loops. Here in this state, it is earlier and is mild affecting the mucosa by necrotic changes. Uh, so only mucosal necrosis, only superficial mucosal necrosis. Hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids are dilated veins or hemorrhoidal plexuses, internal and or external, external in severe cases, bleeding per rectum or streaks on uh, stool, with the thrombosis, this is a complication and pain uh, due to inflammation, affect 5% of population with associated elevated venous pressure, most commonly associated with uh, portal hypertension, because hemorrhoidal rectal vessels are collaterals, uh, collateral channels. Again, also in constipation with chronic constipation and venous stasis of uh, gra uh, of pregnancy as a result of pressure of the gravid uterus on the colon. Dilated submucosal blood vessel, chronically dilated vessels with uh, uh, submucosal vessels are chronically dilated, filled with blood. Complication is a thrombosis and pain uh, and rupture and bleeding per rectum, fresh bleeding per rectum. Uh, regarding the small intestinal diseases, diarrheal diseases, diarrhea by definition is increase in the stool mass, fluidity, and or frequency. More than 200 ml per day, uh, even can reach up to 5 liter per day of fluid loss. 
types of diarrhea. It is uh, of many types, multiple types, secretory diarrhea, osmotic diarrhea, exudative diarrhea, and malabsorptive diarrhea. Uh, to start with secretory diarrhea, uh, from its name, it is a uh, result from viral damage of the mucosal epithelium uh, as, uh, or as a result of bacterial enterotoxin or hormone secreting gastrointestinal tumors. So there is viral enterotoxin secreted hormone by gastrointestinal tumors or uh, mucosal damage, uh, this is characterized by isotonic stool with the plasma, the same uh, osmolarity of the uh, stool with the plasma and is continue or persist with fasting. Here, there is, the, there is severe mucosal damage, so there is inability to absorb fluid. The lining absorptive mucosa of the small bowel is unable to absorb fluid as a result of viral damage, bacterial enterotoxin and hormone and also so it is called secretory. Osmotic osmotic diarrhea it is more concentrated than plasma due to osmotic forces uh, that is exert exerted by unabsorbed luminal solutes. So there is a lot of solutes within the lumen that is uh, take fluid uh, with them with them uh, when uh, goes with uh, resultant osmotic uh, exchange and it, it is uh, abates or disappear with fasting. So there is many or too many solutes within the lumen. This is as in disaccharides deficiency and in antacids ingestion rich in magnesium salts. Exudative diarrhea. Exudative diarrhea in which there is bacterial damage, bacterial damage to the gastrointestinal mucosa. Again, the bowel is unable to absorb fluid and nutrient and characterized by presence of purulent, bloody, purulent means pus containing, and bloody stool that is persist during fasting. It is caused by uh, gram-positive uh, bacteria, especially in lower immune people, immune compromised people, uh, and also as a result of inflammatory bowel disease. White BC, Pus and RBC are present in the stool. This is called purulent bloody stool and exudative diarrhea. Malabsorptive diarrhea. Malabsorptive diarrhea. Uh, it is associated with long-term weight loss, uh, voluminous, bulky stool with increased osmolarity due to unabsorbed nutrient. So there is inability to absorb nutrient, lipid, protein, and uh, so on. So the hallmark or the characteristic of this malabsorptive diarrhea or malabsorption is steatoria, excess fat in stool, fatty stool. Uh, this is uh, the disturbances here is in, and either in intraluminal digestion, intraluminal uh, digestion, as in uh, Crohn's, uh, as in uh, celiac disease, in terminal digestion, in uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and in transepithelial, transepithelial transport, in patient with. Uh, uh, inflamed uh, bowel uh, enterocolitis or inflamed bowel uh, cells or bowel mucosa and in lymph lymphatic transport, lymphatic transport of absorbed lipid uh, as in uh, uh, tuberculosis and so on. So uh, 
in malabsorption, there is disturbance of one or more than one of these mechanisms, intraluminal digestion, terminal digestion, transepithelial transport, and lymphatic transport. Uh, enterocolitis. Uh, enterocolitis, it is either infectious, necrot infectious means infection, either viral or bacterial or parasitic or protozoal. So viral uh, uh, enterocolitis or necrotizing and pseudomembranous. The infectious type is most commonly made by rotavirus which is the most common cause of severe childhood diarrhea and diarrhea-related death worldwide. Whereas the bacterial causes or bacterial infect causes of uh, enterocolitis is related to E. coli, Shigella, Salmonella, Vibrio cholerae, and Clostridium lipschilli, uh, parasitic infestation and protozoa, nematodes, uh, flatworms, and protozoan infection, including Giardia lambelia and Entamoeba histolytica. So these are types of infectious enterocolitis, either viral, bacterial, parasitic, and protozoan. Necrotizing enterocolitis, necrotizing, uh, it is an acute necrotizing inflammation of the small and or large intestine, most commonly seen in uh, premature or low birth weight neonates, most commonly seen in uh, premature or low birth weight neonate as a gastrointestinal emergency. It is most it is multifactorial or mul causes are multiple. It is related to immaturity of the gut immune system, release of cytokines and endotoxin, damaging the mucosa and blood, su and the blood supply, and also uh, uh, the immaturity of the gut system. Also, will, uh, this will uh, encourage the proliferation of the pathogenic bacteria, edema and necrosis and gangrenous changes of the bowel, terminal ileum or ascending colon are the most common sites. So in premature or low birth weight neonate due to immaturity of the gut immune system and proliferation of the pathogenic bacteria within the lumen. Necrotizing enterocolitis, most commonly terminal ileum and the right colon. The segment involved is distended, swollen, uh, congested, and sometimes with gangrenous changes. Uh, perf perforation and peritonitis are complications that may occur. Again, comparison between normal lining mucosa and necrotizing enterocolitis. Uh, and a bowel segment with necrotizing enterocolitis in which the bowel is congested, stended, and necrotic. Another picture of necrotizing enterocolitis, distended bowel, congested hemorrhagic foci, and necrotic areas. Necrotizing enterocolitis, uh, here the normal uh, uh, mucosal lining uh, at the left side the uh, on the right there is necrotic mucosal submucosal and uh, muscular so there is a mural transmural necrosis hemorrhagic necrosis started from the mucosa reaching the mu muscular layer with the potential of perforation Again, necrotizing uh, enterocolitis, you identify transmural. Transmural meaning whole thickness, whole thickness, or full blown whole thickness uh, necrosis involving the all layers, involving all four layers mucosal, submucosal, muscular, and serosal surfaces are uh, necrotized, hemorrhagic uh, associated with. Necrosis and uh, with risk of inflammation and hemorrhage and perforation. Uh, 
pseudomembranous colitis. Uh, this is uh, related to antibiotic abuse or antibiotic associated enterocolitis, in which there is yellow, green, false membrane made of mixture of mucus and neutrophils. The toxin produced by Clostridium difficile in patient with long-term hospitalization. Long-term hospitalized patient may have this type of uh, enterocolitis, pseudomembranous colitis, as a result of uh, antibiotic abuse, and the antibiotic will allow the overgrowth of Clostridium difficile. With uh, patient have sudden onset of fever and diarrhea. Uh, postoperatively in patient receiving antibiotic. Again, diarrhea with dehydration and shock state. Malabsorption, again, malabsorption is a, a defect in assimilation of food or defect in processing of food. So food will be processed in the bowel by process of digestion and absorption. In the intraluminal stage, in the intraluminal stage, the secretory phase is related to uh, pancreatic uh, related secretory phase defect is related to chronic pancreatitis or pancreatic insufficiency. Pancreatic enzymes are important for uh, lipid digestion and uh, uh, secretory phase uh, will be affected in when the pancreas uh, uh, when in case of pancreatic insufficiency or decreased pancreatic secretions in chronic pancreatitis or pancreatic insufficiency and so on. Biliary phase also the bile is important is uh, uh, material for uh, for digestion, uh, uh, so biliary obstruction uh, due to either stone or tumor will result in uh, again uh, decreased in bile secretion into the uh, lumen of bowel. Intestinal stage or terminal stage. Uh, the surface phase in which there is decrease in the in the absorptive surface area or decrease in brush border surface area as in celiac disease or bowel resection. There will be decrease or there will be surface area, bowel surface area loss in celiac disease and in, uh, when there is in celiac disease when there is destruction of the mucosa of the small intestine uh, and the uh, and in bowel resection also there will be decrease in surface area cellular phase in disaccharidase deficiency there is certain enzymes that are deficient important for uh, digestion and the removal stage trans epithelial transport uh, any case of inflammation of the bowel wall, there will be impairment of the uh, absorption and movement of nutrient through the uh, enterocytes or adjacent uh, colonic absorptive cells. Lymphatic transport will be obstructed or will be impaired in tuberculosis and uh, hyper lymphatic hyperplasia or lymphoma and so on. The prototype or the major type of uh, uh, malabsorptive diseases uh, is uh, celiac disease. It's called gluten sensitive enteropathy. Gluten sensitive enteropathy, or called also non tropical sprue celiac disease. It is an autoimmune disorder of the small intestine. Auto, so the etiology and pathogenesis is autoimmunity. Uh, this will be triggered by food containing gliadin. Food containing gliadin. When the uh, affected patient ingests 
and just gluten, which is a protein found in cereals, uh, like grains, grains, الحبوب, wheat, uh, حنطة, barley, شعير, ري, ذرة, oat, شوفان, all these cereals containing uh, gluten protein uh, with digestion or ingestion of this protein uh, it will be uh, uh, a stimuli it will be uh, it will be uh, it is containing uh, gliadine protein so when with digestion it will be uh, uh, gliadine will be released from uh, gluten by digestive uh, enzymes so uh, this peptide will be will, will uh, be uh, in the lumen Uh, this disease or celiac disease also associated with long risk of malignancy uh, that is gastrointestinal lymphoma, small intestinal lymphoma, which is severe type of lymphoma, high-grade uh, lymphoma, and have two times risk more than normal population. Uh, with gluten consumption, there will be degradation or simplification of this Glu glu uh, protein into amino acid peptide gliadine in the small intestine in the lumen. This will pass through the enterocyte into the lamina propria. This gliadine uh, peptide, amino acid peptide, will be a tra uh, uh, travel, uh, travels across the enterocyte to reach the lamina propria, will enter the mucosa into the lamina propria. Uh, with the effect of tissue transglutaminase enzyme, it will be deaminated, deaminated, and presented to macrophages, uh, or, or will be taken by this deaminated gliadin will be taken by the macrophages or antigen presenting cells to be present this deaminated gliadine in the MHC2 molecule in susceptible patients, in susceptible people. So there is genetic predisposition. So not, not each patient uh, or not each people uh, taken gluten will develop uh, celiac disease. Only in genetically susceptible people with HLA, DQ2, and, and 8. This will result, this combination will result in activation of CD4, CD4 T cells. Activation of CD4 T cells. With the activation of these T lymphocyte, inflammatory cytokines will be released, including interferon gamma and tumor necrosis factor. The release of these inflammatory cytokines will result in tissue damage damage and destruction to the uh, uh, intestinal villi and uh, mucosa. Uh, also, uh, there will be resultant B cell activation. When there will be B cell activation, there will be anti-gliadine and anti-tissue uh, transglutaminase and anti-endomycial antibodies will be released release of IgA and IgG antibodies that are very significant and pathognomonic of this disease. Anti-gliadine, anti-tissue transglutaminase, anti-endomycial antibodies. These are antibodies, immunoglobulin secreted by the B cells and also will result in the, this release of Ig uh, 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 antibodies will result in CD8 cell activation and more tissue destruction. So this diagram here, gluten protein within the lumen will be degraded into gliadine uh, uh, and uh, this gliadine will enter into the lamina propria and with the effect of tissue transglutaminase will be deaminated 
result in deaminated gliadine, which will be uh, interact uh, with the antigen presenting cells with uh, that is macrophage uptake, uh, which will react in genetically susceptible patient with this with the HLA DQ2 or DQ8, and this combination will stimulate the T cell T cell. CD4 T cell uh, activation with uh, this will secrete this cells T cell CD4 T cell will secrete interferon gamma and tumor necrosis factor to result in epithelial cell damage or, uh, or villus destruction. Uh, also, uh, B cells will be activated uh, and uh, these will secrete the antibody, specific antibodies, anti-gliadin, anti-endomycial, and anti-tissue transglutaminase antibodies. Uh, also, activation with, uh, with the resultant CD4, CD8. Uh, and secretion of more inflammatory cytokines and more tissue destruction and villus atrophy. So there will be loss of the villi. The villi, tall villi, are not present in celiac disease, will be lost, becomes flattened or becomes blunted with increase in the number of intraepithelial lymphocytes, increase in the number of intraepithelial lymphocytes uh, and uh, crypt elongation. The uh, again, this is normal tall oriented uh, small intestinal villi, most specific in the duodenum. Duodenal villi are the tallest, and here there will be blunting or flattening of the villi due to uh, destruction and increase in the number of intraepithelial lymphocytes and lamina propria are full with large number of lymphocyte activated lymphocytes with the, with the associated crypt crypt hyperplasia to compensate the damaged epithelial surface epithelial cells so glandular destruction villus atrophy sorry it's fill, villus atrophy and uh, uh, crypt or glandular hyperplasia Again, there will be flattening. This is called the flattening or blunting, blunting of inter small intestinal villi or duodenal villi uh, with associated elongated uh, crypts or crypt hyperplasia to compensate the above loss of the cells with the severe uh, or heavy inflammatory infiltration within the lamina propria, increase in intraepithelial lymphocytes and uh, heavy inflammatory infiltration within the lamina propria. Dermatitis herpetiformis is a, a cutaneous lesion or skin involvement or skin associated changes in patient with celiac disease in which they, the IgA antibodies are uh, infiltrating the dermal papillae result in this type of rash. So uh, signs and symptoms, uh, abdominal distension, abdominal pain, chronic diarrhea, uh, characteristically steatoria, fatty stool, but fatty bulky stool with dehydration and symptoms of long uh, standing nutrient loss, weight loss, uh, failure to thrive, that is uh, failure of development, failure of growth, failure to gain weight, anemia, whether iron deficiency anemia or uh, uh, B12 deficiency, that is uh, pernicious anemia. Dermatitis herpetiformis, dermatitis herpetiformis related to circulating IgA antibodies attacking the dermal papillae result in this type of generalized rash in patient with, uh, so circulating IgA will destruct the dermal papillae, dermal papillae of the skin and result in this generalized rash. Pathologically, uh, increase, as I say, increase in the number of intraepithelial lymphocytes, crypt hyperplasia, flattening or blunting or atrophy of the villi, 
loss of mucosal surface uh, or loss of mucosal and brush border surface area. Uh, so this is a type of uh, surface uh, defect or surface area defect or deficiency of surface area related to loss of mucosal and mucosal brush border surface area, which is related to, uh, which is associated with malabsorption. Serologically, serum, the serum of the patient contain this type of antibodies, which are sensitive or or pathognomonic of the disease, anti-gliadine, IgA, IgG, anti-endomycium, IgA, and anti-tissue transglutaminase, IgA. They are uh, specific. The treatment of celiac disease is a uh, gluten-free diet, gluten-free diet, withdrawal of gluten, withdrawal of gluten from the diet with correction of nutritional deficiencies and related malabsorption. Okay. I will start. Uh, I will stop here and uh, continue in with the next record.